Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we'll unlock the book Coaching for Performance, Growing Human Potential and Purpose, The Principles and Practice of Coaching and Leadership. Most people would hire a professional tennis coach to learn to play tennis so they could receive the guidance they need. However, John Whitmore told us from his personal experience that a ski coach can actually help us make faster progress in tennis. In the 1970s he opened a tennis stadium with the Harvard educationalist and tennis expert Timothy Galway. Because so many people had signed up to learn tennis, they asked some ski coaches to make up for the shortage in tennis coaches. No one expected what happened next. The people coached by the ski coaches made greater progress than those trained by actual tennis coaches. Based on this eye-opening discovery, this counterintuitive coaching practice was introduced to the business arena. As expected, it helped employees deliver unprecedented high performance. Today, global 500 companies such as Google, Ford, Microsoft, and Intel practice employee coaching. You might wonder why such an unconventional practice yielded such great success. How did the coaching management model create better managers? Coaching for performance growing human potential and purpose, the principles and practice of coaching and leadership answers these questions. Coaching for performance tells us that rather than simply imparting knowledge to coaches, a coach's most important job is to help coaches realize their own potential and maximize their value. This book provides a clear guidance on the theory of coaching and its practice, so we can use it as a reference from time to time. The book has been well received since its publication and is widely recognized as the coaching bible. According to Thorsten Klein, the director of eBay Global Talent and Organization Development, this book is a must-read for leaders and organizational development practitioners who recognize that coaching is a performance activity that holistically impacts leaders, teams, and company culture. According to Patrick Murphy, the former president of Ryanair, the principles outlined in this book can give impetus to business changes, help improve employees' job satisfaction, and enhance business performance. The author John Whitmore was a pioneer in coaching and a co-founder of both Performance Consultants International PCI and the most commonly used coaching model in the world, Grow. He took the lead in introducing coaching to businesses in the early 1980s, and his contributions to coaching and leadership throughout the world have facilitated change and transformation in many organizations. In 2013, he was awarded with the Lifetime Achievement Award by the International Coach Federation ICF for his contributions in the field. Let's now discover how coaching can benefit us both at work and in our daily lives. This bookie will unlock coaching for performance in three parts. Part 1, Understanding Coaching. Part 2, How a Coach Can Unlock Employees' Potential. Part 3, The Main Coaching Management Practices. Earlier we learned about how the author and his partner had ski coaches coach people to play tennis due to a shortage of tennis coaches, which yielded a surprising result. The people coached by the ski coaches actually made greater progress than those trained by professional tennis coaches. Whitmore and Galway attributed the outcome to the ski coaches' lack of knowledge of tennis. Since they couldn't figure out whether a stroke was accurate or not, they could only ask coaches questions like, what do you feel is wrong about that stroke, or which part of it didn't you use? The coaches would then focus on what was wrong with their foot position and waist strength and try again. It was like when parents help their children learn to walk. Parents help their kids achieve their best performance through guidance and encouragement, not by teaching them step by step. This made Whitmore and Galway aware that the key to coaching lies in helping coaches unlock their potential by reducing inner noise rather than by imparting knowledge. They then built a new coaching model based on this finding and introduced it to the business arena, which to this day has inspired managers and leaders everywhere and helped millions of people do their best at work. But before introducing this coaching model, let's examine the drawbacks of the traditional management model. First, traditional businesses mainly use the command and control management approach. The manager gives direct commands or instructions that employees carry.